Hi everybody, my name is Dennis, and welcome back to another album review. Today we are reviewing the latest record from UK rapper Slow Tie, entitled Tyron. Now, I was kind of looking forward to this. Um, I didn't love his last album as much as a lot of other people did, but I still thought it was a really good record, and it showed a lot of potential. His frustrations, his anger, his kind of mischievous personality were all really engrossing, and I kind of liked the criticisms and frustrations he displayed about government and life in the UK. I mean, I mean, the title of the record is There's Nothing Great About Britain, so... I was kind of expecting more of the same here, and that really wasn't the case. This album is split into two halves, really, um, and you can clearly tell where they cut off based on the tone of the tracks, the lyrics that they present. It's a very obvious turning point, as well as the stylization of the titles of these tracks, turning from all caps to the latter half being all in lowercase. So, why is this the case? Well, it's because the first half is much of the more standard slow tie that many of us are used to at this point, where he's very loud, very braggadocious, you know, it's meant to be a bunch of bangers, and the second half is a much more reserved, withdrawn, kind of reflective, personal, um, personal kind of display here, where the beats are much more melodic, they tend to be much prettier sounding, and not nearly as bass heavy and hard hitting. I will say I do think the second half of here is a pretty decent amount better than the first half, but both do have their issues, in my opinion. I guess let's kind of break it down through the first half of it. The first half to me is just incredibly inconsistent. I think lyrically there's not really enough going on that's as sharp or witty as was on his last record, even if there is the occasional funny line from time to time. It all kicks off with the track 45 Smoke, which has an okay instrumental. I don't really get into the, the vibe of this one, it just doesn't really hit me that well. It feels a bit too safe, if anything. Uh, some of the lines are pretty solid, but I really don't care for the last verse of this track. To me, the vocal performance that Slow Tie gives off here is just pretty irritating. Followed by this, we have Cancelled, featuring Skepta, and this one caught my attention, because I, I thought that this was going to pretty directly address the frankly embarrassing display that Slow Tie put out at, at that uh, award show uh, about a year ago, I think, and it doesn't. In fact, there's not really much mention of cancel culture at all. It feels like a clickbait song. The only real mention of canceling is Skepta in The Hook, where he's basically saying he can't be canceled because he's so rich and famous. Which, to me, is just completely ignorant, because the whole point of the cancel thing was that your power and status do, do not make you immune from you know paying for your actions. You, know, you are still responsible for your actions and should be held accountable, regardless of how much money you have, so... To me, the the track just kind of misses the point. There's not really a point to it. The instrumental is pretty solid, and I think Skepta's verse here is quite good, actually, just sonically. But lyrically, it it just feels like clickbait. If nothing else, it's a it's a clickbait song where they use you know like a, a trigger word that you know gets everyone riled up. You know, pretty much no matter how you feel about it, and then they don't really talk about anything. Slow Tie's verse here is pretty boring as well. He doesn't really do much interesting. But luckily things do pick up in the next tracks in the next track uh, Maza which is a really fun one. The beat is very spacey, it's very hypnotic. It has a very strong sense of Playboy Cardi, especially his Dilit era, but it works here. The hook is catchy. Slow Tie's verses sound really good. The beat is really fun. It's a great track. And ASAP Rocky's verse on here is just great. He sounds just effortless across this entire thing. It has some pretty good one-liners here and there. It's a really solid track. I will say we get a couple more weak moments in here with Vex and Watt. Both of these are pretty short songs. Uh, Watt being, I think, the shortest track on the entire album. Vex isn't bad. I do kind of like some of the aspects of the instrumental, but the hook is so poorly mixed, in my opinion. I don't like the effects put on the vocals. It 
just kind of drowns out the whole thing. It creates this really awkward dynamic between the volume of the hook and the volume of the of the verses because the hook is so much quieter and then just suddenly you have slow tie screaming in your ear on the verses it's really jarring it's disorienting and it definitely needed some work i think maybe if it was cleaned up a bit production wise it would be a nice track but as it is it doesn't really do a whole lot for me Watt is kind of a similar situation to 45 Smoke. It's not bad, it just doesn't really do anything to impress me, and it was definitely one of the more forgettable tracks on here. However, I do think the final two cuts on this first leg of the record are quite good. Dead is a really engaging track. I love the monotone, borderline spoken word hook over this bass-heavy instrumental. It works really well, and I, I don't know why. I just think it's so catchy. It's earwormy. It's really, really... um, really. At, I love the atmosphere. I love the, the whole aesthetic that this brings to the table. And it's not just kind of the blind braggadociousness that he brings out on the previous tracks here, but it's a bit more specific where, you know, he's kind of talking about his legacy. And, you know, even if he's dead, even if he's gone, which I think... That whole sentiment carries a lot more weight when we get into the themes of the latter half of this record. But just that whole sentiment, you know, it's like, you know, I'm dead, I am God. You know, you can take away my life, you can do this, you can do that, but, you know, my legacy remains. I've made my impact. I've done what I need to do. I've left my mark on this world. I will live on, whether I'm breathing or not. I think it's a really fun sentiment. There are a couple of eyebrow raising lines in here especially the you know at you no bless you line like wow you know you're you're you know you're real bad you're you're real bad boy you know someone sneezed and you didn't say bless you Ugh, you know put this man in jail <laughs> but uh i don't know it didn't ruin the song for me it's a silly line it i don't think it was thought through all that well because it just sounds really corny and doesn't sound tough at all but it's still a fun track overall. Slow Tie changes up his flow on here. It's much more uh, slow paced and it's like he's speaking to you in a lot of ways. But I think it works. I like the change of pace and I really enjoyed this track. And the closing track, Play With Fire, is a gorgeous segue into the latter half of this record where it has a much more melodic tone. You have this these high pitched vocals on the hook going like Play With Fire, Play With Fire. Like, play with, play with, play with, play with fire, make it lit. And it works really well. I love the instrumental on here. It's gorgeous. It's really engaging. It's a really enjoyable cut on here. And I love the whole sentiment of the track where we basically talk about him kind of poking and prodding the bear almost, especially with the kind of things he was talking about in his last album, some of his actions out that he's taken outside of the music industry, and then kind of the whole sentiment that he brings out, especially as we see through the first track, first leg of tracks on here, you know, where he's playing with fire and he's going to get burned. I like that sentiment because it really segues gorgeously into the much more emotional and personal themes that go on here because he's, we see kind of this this veil of confidence and like mischievousness start to slowly fade away and it all starts with kind of just this question of you know am I playing with the fire too much am I getting too close to the fire am I gonna get burned it's a really great cut on here followed by that is the first cut of our second half on here which I think is one of my favorite slow tie songs period I tried it's a phenomenal cut I think that the hook on here is so gorgeous the instrumental is shimmering, it's bright, it's very anthemic sounding at points, and it is just so engaging. I love the way all the different instruments in here work together. It creates some beautiful layers, some beautiful sound combinations, and it is just phenomenally produced. Lyrically, it's also one of the sharpest on here, where he's essentially talking about how he tried to kill himself. He tried to commit suicide. Um... And all of the pain that he feels through everything here. And I don't know if he actually did attempt suicide. I hope he's okay if he did. I mean, he seems to be expressing it in a healthy manner here. 
you know, just kind of expressing all of his emotions, putting it all out here. I feel for him, and I hope he's okay, but gosh, this is such a beautiful cut. It's very emotional. There's a lot of great lines on here. I especially like the one where he talks about how if heaven, if hell is meant for sinning, heaven, heaven's never meant for me, where he's kind of just accepted his role as the bad guy in ways. You know, he's like, well, I'm the bad guy. I'm the sinner. I'm the one who messes up. I'm the one who screws things up. It's a really powerful line that I think beautifully sums up his emotions of this track. It's a very, very phenomenal cut on here, and to me speaks a lot about his character and shows his songwriting capability beyond anything else he's ever done before. I do think the next track, Focus, wasn't the strongest on the album. It's okay, I do like how personal it is. It's another one that I think is very engaging on a lyrical level, but the beat just doesn't do anything for me. The hook is pretty bland, and it's definitely the most forgettable cut in across the entire last leg here. Uh, Terms was a pretty good cut. I really liked the hook from Dominic Fike. I think uh, Denzel's bridge was very good as well. And... The whole thing is just kind of about the influence and the misrepresentation, I think. At least that's kind of how I saw it. You know, where you get your they get your words twisted, they misinterpret the kind of things you're trying to say, and then they see you in a negative light for it. And kind of these, these struggles that come with fame where every single thing that you do is analyzed, you know, with a fine toothed comb. It's a really, really engaging track, and I do think that Dominic Fike's hook really makes this song, but I enjoyed the entire cut nonetheless. There wasn't really a moment on here that I wasn't enjoying the song. Uh, Push after this is another great one. Uh, Lyrically, it's again one of the best on here. I love the hook on here. I think her vocals on here from Deb Never, she just has such a gorgeous voice. It's so, so beautiful, and I kind of love the idea that they're going for, where she is essentially narrating his life from a third-person point of view at points, you know, where she says, you know, he found a road to quietly walk alone, harder the days he learned to know, you know, the calm comes before the storm, and she's talking about kind of just narrating the emotions that he's going through, where, you know, it's all about just sitting back, and reflecting on everything you've done in life and not being satisfied, essentially. You know, you sit back and watch the rain, and you're like, alright, well, I've done this, and I'm not happy with it. And now I'm, I just kind of have to sit back and watch how things happen. It's a very, very beautiful cut. I think Slow Tie's verses on here work great. I love his vocal inflections. I love the way that he enunciates certain things. It works really, really well. And then the final few tracks on... The next couple of tracks on here to me weren't as good. NHS was probably my least favorite cut on the entire record, which is really unfortunate because I think there was potential here. But everything goes down the toilet when you have one of the worst written songs on the entire record with a blatant Brock Brock Hampton hook ripoff. Um... The high-pitched vocals, the stylization of it all, it's a blatant rip-off. The beat is boring, it's bare-bones, it's skeletal, there's nothing interesting going on here. The lyrics are surface-level at best, it's just, what's this without that? What's this without that? You know, there's two sides to everything, you know? What's a sandwich without dinner? What's a feather, you know, to a mattress? What's, you know, what's an actor with no actress? Like, you're not saying anything profound here. The whole point is just like, oh, you know, there's two sides to a story. What's this without that? You know, there's always two sides to it. But just saying, you know, dozens of, you know, what's this without that? What's this without that? What's this without that? To me is lazy, uninteresting, and really, really boring. And there's definitely a few eyebrow raisers in the verses here. You know, it's like, try breathing. You might find freedom instead of squeezing up your buttocks trying to hold your crap in. I get what he's trying to say here, you know, he's talking symbolically about, you know, forcing yourself to kind of like clench up and not express your true self, but there had to have been a better way to say that than what he does here. It's a really poorly written track, I think it was really disappointing, and there's not really anything I like about this one. Uh, The next song, Feel Away, I think was pretty solid lyrically, apparently it was supposed to be a 
song dedicated to his brother, but lyrically the whole thing seems about a romantic relationship, so I'm not really sure what that's supposed to be, but my interpretation of it just from the lyrics was all about how he's kind of just doubting himself as being good in this relationship, you know, where he's saying, like, you know, now I'm half the man I used to be, you know, well, am I the bad guy? Maybe you're the bad guy. Maybe you're not doing things right, but I want to try and make things right, but maybe I'm not doing enough. I kind of like that reflective nature of it, but, I don't know, James Blake's hook here just does nothing for me. I think his verse is quite nice, but, uh, the beat is not interesting to me, and even though I do like some of it lyrically, it just doesn't do anything for me on a sonic level. It doesn't do anything. However, ADHD is one of my favorite cuts on here, and it's a gorgeous closing track. Uh, it's easily the most personal, I think. It's the most direct with Slow Tie addressing the mental health issues and the frustrations that he has with his own life and the things that have happened in it. He talks very blatantly about, you know, develop, developing dependency issues, and kind of, you know, the life that he's lived and the f difficulties that he has on an emotional level. And it's very monotone, very straightforward, cutthroat delivery. Until the final verse, which is probably my favorite verse on the entire record, where he just goes off. He is loud, he is angry, he is so aggressive, and I just love how explosive he gets. I love that kind of antithesis that we get here, where, you know, the juxtaposition between the very monotone nature of the rest of the song with the explosive finale to it, it ends up working really, really well, and it's a great cut on here. Definitely one of my favorite tracks here. But overall, I thought this album was decent. I enjoyed it. There were plenty of cuts here I liked, but also about just as many that I didn't really care for. I do think Slow Tie still has a lot of potential. I'm still kind of waiting for him to put out that one album that really hits me. Because both this album and Nothing Great About Britain had their moments of just pure beauty where I thought, this is amazing. But to me, neither record has really blown me away in its entirety. So overall, I'm feeling a decent six on this one. If you gave this album a listen, be sure to tell me what you thought of it down in the comments below. Tell me how wrong my opinion is, as always, and I'll see you in the next review.